Hi guys, uh, this is the uh, Eye of the Beholder. This is a, a bit of a quick video for a friend on YouTube uh, that wanted a bit of help explaining the difference between the subspecies of boa constrictor. Um, obviously the pet trade and the actual uh, stock in the wild uh, can be quite different. Um, but luckily nowadays um, we can have a, quite a lot of um, the, the localities from South America and Central America um, that are accurately uh, kept uh, within the trade. Um, so briefly I'll just go into the map that I've made up uh, from a plain map. Um, it distinguishes the differently the regions for the, the subspecies uh, and I've got the, the secondary topography map that backs up um, the uh, the drawing that I've made. Um, so let's just start off with what I've made. The, uh, the regions, in fact, let me find a little marker for us. Let's use these tongs here. Um, this blue region across northern Venezuela, uh, across northern Colombia and down the western side of Colombia and Ecuador, uh, and the northern tip of Peru, you'll find the uh, boa constrictor uh, imperator or imperata, imperator, I don't know, however you want to pronounce it, um, up through Panama into Central America, uh, across up into northern Mexico, um, you will find this subspecies of boa. Um, this boa constrictor is what used to be called the common boa um, because it was the most commonly kept in the captive trade. Um, it was imported God knows how many times uh, from Columbia in the 70s and 80s for the pet trade uh, as reptiles become more popular. Uh, but now as we uh, hit into the, the 2000s, 2010s, um, we, the, the, the term common boa is, is used less and less uh, due to the fact that we can distinguish between the localities that are kept uh, and that have been imported. Um, quite popular to find boas from uh, the Barranquilla region uh, and down the Rio Magdalena uh, into Medellin, into these areas. Uh, they tend to be the most popular boa constrictors from Colombia that have brought in. Um, uh, however, you do see a lot of Panamanian boas, uh, uh, San Isidro uh, Costa Ricans and San Jose um, they seem to be quite popular uh, as well as Honduras you get the little islands off Honduras where you find the Hog Island bows uh, but again like the locality captive uh, keepers you'll have so much variation uh, across the, the US and Europe um, drift into the main body of South America you'll see the, the markup of the, the, the red areas this is the true red tail BCCs. So, I mean, we hear hear a lot all the time of people saying that they've got a red tail boa, um, which kind of frustrates me. Um, I mean, it's no fault of their own, but I mean, if they're told they've got a red tail, they've got a red tail. But you'll find that a lot of people call their boas red tail boa constrictors because they've not actually looked into the detail of what they've actually got. Um, the true red tails are very distinctly different from the, the captive stuff that came uh, in for the imperators. Um, you'll find that the, the 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 Peruvian and the the Western Brazilian uh, bows across the Amazon basin, all this region here, and the southern tips of uh, Colombia, all these bows, the the true red tail bows, are a combination of bright gold. Uh, like a golden background colour uh, with distinctly dark black saddles uh, and you'll get quite bright red tails uh, hence the term red tail boa uh, and as as it kind of transitions through the Amazon and further north into the uh, into the, like the areas of Venezuela and Guyana you'll find on the the eastern side of the Guyana shield um, you'll find the the um, the red tail boas kind of change from like the, the golden colours into like a, a thorny brown colour and then eventually into like a, a dark silvery grey. Uh, all these boas in this eastern block 
of the guy on the shield uh, tend to be this silvery grey colour. Um, I mean, very in Suriname bows are extremely popular uh, in the pet trade nowadays, as well as Guyana's. Uh, but remember, if you look at the borders, uh, the, the black lines that I've put in, these borders are just political borders. So whether you've got a Guyanan or a Suriname or a French Guyanan boa uh, from these areas, it doesn't particularly matter. I mean, like, yes, if you're told it's from a particular region, then that's great. You label it as so. But when people get into these debates about the difference between Guyanas and Surinami, Surinam, Surinamese boas, excuse me, um, there's not an awful lot of difference. Obviously, transitional from... The, uh, the western regions of Guyana to the eastern side of Suriname, there'll be probably quite a large difference between those bows. But this border, it's, ignore the border. It's a political border, if that. There's no, there's no isolation, there's no difference, there's no real transitional difference in between those bows. The only real difference is through hundreds and thousands of miles as you come across different uh, temperatures, environments into the wetlands and the Amazon region. That's your own real difference. Majority of the, the boa constrictors from these regions are all very similar. So as you come across this side of Brazil, you'll see that I've come, uh, I've got a lot of these uh, arrows labelled across uh, across Bolivia, the Mato Grosso, uh, where it's all the wetlands and stuff, uh, and then we've got the, the desert regions across the Goyas. Um, basically, these boas are true red tail BCCs, but they're like a, a transitional form of boa that start to drift uh, and change. Like their, their, their general body makeup tend to change. Um, they get darker uh, and their body structures start to change. They become with shorter tails, uh, less tail saddles. Um, and as you can see in this green region here, this is where I've marked up where the uh, bow constrictor Amarali is. These are the distinctly, uh, they were distinctly labelled differently um, as the Amarali because of their tail saddles were um, between two and five uh, and the subcordial sub uh, scales were a lot shorter. So up as far north as Brasilia, all the way down through to Curitiba and Sao Paulo, uh, these are the, the, the large regions, uh, sorry, the large populations of uh, Amarale. They tend to be uh, like, a, again, silvery, um, very dark, a lot of black saddles um, across these regions. And then as you come west, further up to Bol Bolivia, uh, into Brazil again, they start to change um, their background colours, become golden and a bit more... Uh, brighter as they come up towards the actual BCC regions. Again, this is a transitional uh, form of boa um, that is just a naturally occurring thing. So it's whether to say that they are BCC or BCA is hard to actually put a tail on it, uh, put an exact label on it, but um, this is just a natural transition. There's no isolation, there's nothing stopping these boas interact or interbreed. Um, that's just the way it is. Um, the only thing I can kind of uh, mention is the, the Mato Grosso regions here and the Mato Grosso do Sul. Um, there's a distinct difference across there that stop the like the yellow anacondas and the green anacondas. Um, that's where you start to check, start seeing difference with the anacondas. So I don't know if there's a correlation with that uh, and the BCCs and the BCAs. So drifting further down. Across Paraguay and into northern Argentina, you'll find the, the boa constrictor occidentalis. Uh, these are a, a large subspecies of boa constrictor, very similar to the, uh, the BCCs in size. They'll be a good 10, 11 feet long um, in some cases. Uh, however, they, they have short tails, like the Amarali. So there's, there's, there's something connected to this region where the, the BCCs and the BCAs kind of intermingle. And the further south that you go into the Tropic of Capricorn, uh, the weather uh, is obviously uh, brings out their, uh, their dark colours. So obviously they, they emit darker colours the further south they go because they need to absorb the heat as best they can from the sun. 
So if you're a, a bright coloured snake, for example, it's quite hard to absorb um, the, the, the heat from the sun and the ground. Um, so it's just one of those things that happens. Similar to this region here, across the western side of Ecuador, the, because of the, the, the isolated areas that have got these boas in, um, a lot of these longer calder boas and the imperators across here tend to be almost black uh, and they, they, they change as, as you go further north, they kind of drift into a different colour phase of, of, um, completely. But across like Esmeraldas and the islands of Gorgana um, across here, um, you'll find that all these boas tend to be uh, black or very, very dark because they're isolated in colder regions across the mountains. Um, so that's just like a brief um, look into everything. I mean, obviously, I've been waffling on for about 11 minutes now. But here's another quick look at the topography. Uh, and as you can see, this is the, the deep Amazon basin here where you'll find all the, the, the true red tail boas all across this side. Um, these are all the true red tails. Uh, and the separation through the imperators onto the northern side and Central America. Um, so that's just the message that I wanted to try and get to you, mate. Um, obviously other people can benefit from this as well but um, this was mainly for my friend on YouTube um, so yeah good luck with that mate if there's anything else uh, I'll try and get uh, more details to you um, so for now this is uh, goodbye cheers